Welcome to another Let's Play of Quest for Glory 3. My name is Anna Myrtle. I think this will in fact be our last Let's Play of Quest for Glory 3. When we left, um, the Peace Council had gone horribly wrong. And now it's off to the jungle to try to find Manu. Rakish specifically told us to head to the waterfall and do what we could to get over it and, uh, you know, attack the demons and, uh, save the world. Attack demons, save world. A lot of focus on our emotional state. Ha! Something did come for us. Occasionally stuff attacks you while... Try our groovy new lightning spell. It's pretty. It's blue. What, um... What status do we have in that? 34 and, um... Oh, that's what I want. 272. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't want to sleep right next to the dead body, but it's uh, always felt a little clunky to me that you have to leave the area and remake a camp. That strikes me as clunky. There we go, it's daytime. Uh, so as I was saying before we were so rudely interrupted, we don't really focus much on the hero's emotional journey at this time. But you gotta think he's feeling pretty down. Uh, you worked so hard to bring together this uh, meeting Whether as a paladin, by joining the Simbani tribe and requesting a boon of the magic drum, or uh, as a wizard, finding the Lepherman tribe and using your magic to convince them that you're hot stuff so that they um, listen to you and give you the Spear of Death in the hopes of averting war. Man, friend, greet the monkey, ask about village, sure, we'll go to the village, why not? Um, and of course, if you're a thief, you actually uh, steal, um, you steal the drum. You break into the, uh, Libon's hut in this, in the Simbani, um, village. I don't know how. I've never done it. You steal a drum. Supposedly there is a, a place to use your grapnel and rope. I guess at the actual leopard men uh, village because there's a, there's points for feed leopard, cross tightrope, feed monkey. Uh, I wonder if that's Manu. Um, not sure. Anyway, and then get spear. So I guess, as a thief, you can actually steal both of them and then give both of them back, which is very audacious and cool. Um, God, I wonder how quickly we could do that. Because I would kind of like to see that. We could probably do it pretty quickly. I'm talking myself into it, and that's always dangerous. 
Um, but anyway, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, you've gone all this work and trouble to arrange this uh, meeting, and then it all goes horribly wrong. <clears throat> In the worst possible way. And uh, nice little sparkle effect on the lake down there. That's gorgeous. So you've got to be feeling pretty crappy right now. Manu, village, monkeys. So we're a wizard. We're going to just levitate our way up into the trees. Why not? Foosh. I don't know if the other monkeys talk. But, uh, we tell him we need to go to the Lost City, convince Manu. But we really do need to go, Manu. Uh, follow Manu to the Monkey Village, three points. Enter Monkey Village, eight points. Get Manu to take you to the Lost City, three points. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm still sick. I don't get better very quickly. I wish I did. Doesn't look like we get the the bit bit where the demon attacks and the monkeys all flee, um, possibly because we've already fought it once. So when we were here before, we used uh, we had Manu create a rope. Or a rope bridge and we walked it. We're gonna levitate now because we're a uh, mage. You tell Manu that you will use magic to cross the kazoo. Manu knows. Manu see man from a fly. Manu knows magic. Magic good. Magic Manu's friend. You tell Manu that you will levitate but you, you need Manu's help to cross. If Manfred can fly, why not fly across a big rock water that falls down? You tell Manu that levitate only moves you up and down. Manu, understand. Manu's smart. Manfred go up and down. Down and up. How Manfred get across big rock water that falls down when just go up and down? We're going to take some vines. Manfred very big. Vine very small. Manu think Manfred great vine. You tie one end of the rope to yourself. You feel pressure on the rope as Manu tries to pull you across the chasm. You tell Manu to pull the vine after you levitate. Hokey hokey, Manu pull vine, then Manu friend fly. You tell Manu not to pull until you are in the air. Manu not stupid, Manu smart, Manu right all of time. Man friend fly, then Manu pull rope. So that worked well. Thank you, Manu. Now, we did not get the opal eye from the... Oh, we are going to have the bad thing show up. I thought that was before the waterfall. There he is. We did not get the opal eye from the near bat because I think there's a, another opal eye that we're supposed to get as a magic user. It's on the uh, points list anyway. So hopefully we have not completely screwed over our game by not doing that. <sighs> Cross waterfall, 10 points. Get Opal Eye of Anubis. That's points only magic users can get. We'll see. We'll see. All right, here we go. Let's try to do this right. <laughs> Bad city there. We go back to the good monkey village. Okay. 
We need to explain. Eye that glows fits right in head. Well. Here we go. Where is it? I don't see it. Do you see it? We didn't bring one with us. Get opal eye of Anubis. From where? You see a relief carving of the Egyptian god Anubis. It seems to be missing a stone from its eye. Wait, so actual liter literal Egypt exists in this world? In addition to Tarna, which looks like Egypt? I don't know. Oh, okay, so there's a stone statue here. It seems to have something glowing in its eye. Perfect, we have a fetch spell. That is how the magic user gets the opal. And just to check, we have 402 puzzle points. I have no idea if we'll be able to get all the puzzle points because we I've read that it is impossible to get the, cur the, the full and correct number of puzzle points in this game. Which just blows my mind that they didn't catch that. So we've seen these demons before. They're guarding the door. The paladin fought them because paladins apparently whack things with sticks. We are supposed to calm them. It says they yawn and look stupid. I don't know that that actually made them sleepy, but maybe they won't notice us now. Cast Calm on Demon Guard for 6 points, and then cast Open on the Door for 4 points. You hear a click. Your spell does the trick. You hear a click. Boring. 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 This job is the pits. The prisoner never tries to escape since the last time I beat it up, and nobody gets past the guards below to get to us. I tell you, it's boring. Okay. Get past demon guards is three points, and then we're going to need to use the dispel potion on Rishaka. My name is Rishaka Darkresha. I am a warrior of Tarna. You must be a powerful warrior yourself to have made it here. The demons enter this world through a gate at the top of this tower. If we can destroy the world gate, we can defeat the demons. Greetings, human. My master senses regrets, but he is too busy to speak with you right now. I have taken over the body of this creature. All harm done to me will harm her, and she is the daughter of my master's enemy, Rakish. Now I shall destroy you, and you shall destroy her. I win both ways. Not with my dispel potions, sir. That was 10 points. And I don't think we get to look at our status anymore, so. Uhura! Johari! Any day now! Yes, Seifu! Harami! Take your time. Rakish! Rishaka! By the power within and without, may you be healed. We done here. Krisha opened a portal as soon as she could locate my friend here. We came as soon as we could. Your friends, young Prince of Shapir, did not want you to face danger alone. Hey, don't look at me. I'm no hero. I just came because I didn't want to stay in Tarna. I ain't fighting no demons. The prophecy I had from the Temple of Sekhmet 
said that five from very different lives will stand beside each other to face the darkness. Rishaka, will you fight at the side of the Prince of Shapir? Of course, Rakish, my father. Oh, I am sorry, my friend, for if Harami does not stand by your side, I fear the prophecy cannot be fulfilled. No way, no way I face a demon. Then I guess, my friend, you will need to face the demons with only four of you. Uhura and I must stay here to stand off the demons that are trying to follow you. Oh, he's so cute. Manu here. Manu, come. Help me and friend. Not let bad things get me and friend. The prophecy is fulfilled. For four different friends now follow where the hero leads. A monkey? That's supposed to fight demons. Give me a break. How is a monkey supposed to help? Manu, very brave. Manu, fight bad things. Manu, help man friend. Harami, never reject the offer of friendship and help. Manu has great courage and loyalty, and with that he will aid our friend well. The way you must all go lies through that blocked door. I sense powerful demonic magic behind there, so be careful. By the power within and without, that door shall open. Go quickly. The demons are trying to get in here. Uhura and I will fight them off. Quaheri, my friend. Quaherini, all of you. Good luck. Hurry. Johari and... Yesufu said nothing during that conversation. That kind of bothers me. You find yourself drawn to the mirror at the opposite end of the room. Reach Mirror of Darkness for three points. So we all see our reflection. And then the, those reflections are perverted into unhappy things. Demons. Yes, if it was taking a while. There we go. I like how Jopari is a leopard man again, because I thought they had to do a big ritual to change, but maybe not? Our enemy has started with some health already gone. This is not gonna work. So this is doing no damage to him whatsoever. Whack at him with the dagger we barely know how to use. Any day you want to help, Harami. There we go. I'll fight this monster. You gotta run. These things can't really be defeated until you take out the demon wizard. So make like a hero and save the day. Take these pills I borrowed and scram. Thank you. As you run up the weird spiral staircase, you take the healing and mana pills Harami handed you. Our plan worked, Lord. Even now, our enemy Rakish is in disgrace, and the Liontar warriors march out from Tarna. The Simbani idiots and the Leopardmen fools will all avenge their murdered leaders, and they will all blame Rakish and each other, not dreaming it is our doing. My armies of demons and eight men stand ready and waiting to attack the warring Liantar, Simbani, and Leopard Men when they're at their weakest. With the magic release from the deaths of so many beings, I can open the gate once more and allow you to enter this world, my lord. Hurry, I grow impatient to again taste the power of killing things. The orb is still weak from the amount of energy it took to possess the Leopard Men chief before the peace conference. It took great skill to kill the Sy Simbani Livon without anyone realizing the Leopard Man Chief was possessed. Fool, restore the orb's power immediately. Yes, my lord, I will start the ritual right away. Okay. So, that was a little bit more information than I think we got last time. Or else I've just forgotten. So we've got to do some things. 
that's an orb. That's a world gate with what appears to be a demon. That is the uh, demon wizard. You realize with horror that this must be the demon wizard who injured Rakisha's leg and nearly destroyed Tarna a few years ago. The top of this pillar broke off and fell from the tower. What happens if we knock the pillar over? Not a damn thing. So we can try to attack the demon wizard. So, you have escaped from my trap. Perhaps destroying you will be more interesting than I thought. Oh, hey. Reversal. Whoops, that's not reversal. Oh, hey, reversal. <laughs> Floor of flame. Inflame this fool. Eat flaming death, fool. Oh. We cast calm. I don't know if it did anything. Pillar of stone, heed my command. Gargoyle, come forth and destroy that man. Um. Lightning? Oh, here we go. Take some lightning to the face. Take some more lightning to the face. Take a whole face full of lightning. <laughs> nice. Don't crush. So you have defeated my minion. Enough of this foolishness. Now I shall summon my lord. He will deal with you personally. He'll enjoy that. So, quick question. No, that didn't work. What happens if we summon our staff? You think that worthless piece of wood can harm me? Yes? Oh shit. Don't crash. God damn it. It's gonna, isn't it? It's gonna crash. We did something we weren't supposed to do. Bloody heck. Thank you for auto-saving every five seconds. <laughs> Worthless piece of wood. So we're going to cast... Force? Will force push it over? <laughs> We're doing something wrong. I know what we're supposed to do ultimately, but I'm not sure why it's not working. There we go. <laughs> so he cast fetch. Ha! Now I have your staff. You are defenseless against me. So, when we made our staff, Grisha said there was one spell we absolutely were not to use. And uh, when we went before Sekhmeth, they said that uh, we would have to, to lose or destroy the thing that we care about. Um, our greatest magic or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. And, and throughout the game, there was a way to kill yourself that I didn't explore. And that is casting the trigger spell while you have your staff out. When your staff is out, if you cast trigger, it will explode. Our staff is out, and someone else is holding it. Boom. And we kicked his head in the chasm. So, well done us. We, uh, 446. <laughs> we're, again, we're not going to get to the full. Um, if we cast force... We're able to knock the gate, the orb into the gate. You run for the stairs to return to your friends.
Man friend, man friend, happy, happy you come back. Welcome back, my friend. Habari, hero. You made it, huh? The demons were drawn back into their own world when you closed off the world gate. This land and all its people are safe thanks to you. Missouri, friend. I've not been knowing how much longer Rakish and I hold off the demons. A good fight, much better, went over. You were a good man to be fighting at my side, friend. Now my people and the cow people will have peace because of you, hero. I'll name Yasufu's son for you. What? You said you wanted to marry me. I accept. It is an honor to meet and serve you, friend. Man, friend, very brave. You did good, kid. And we're writhing. This is dark magic. Aaron. To be continued in... Quest for glory for shadows of darkness. And there's Adavis grinning. And a hooded figure next to him. No one knows who it is. Puzzle points, 491. Apparently, like again, apparently it is impossible to get a proper 500. Um, which is really freaking annoying, actually. Um, so we're going to call this one Wiz. We'll just say G3 Wiz. I don't remember what we called the other one. Oh, not A. Not A, not A. We need it to be... We need it to be C. There we go. All better. Oh, let me think here. So, this is a 27 minute video. And I'm wondering how quickly we could do a thief run, at least to show the differences. Oh, G3 Wiz, G3 Paladin, good, we called it that. Lori won. Import. Oh no, wait, back up. Not what I meant to do. Play game, import. Let's try this again. Glory 2 without the. Uh, not a paladin, let's make him a thief. And let's give him. Uh... Well, crap, he's not gonna have very many pick locks, is he? I don't know if he actually needs them, um, but we'll we'll find out, won't we? Oh, good. You can click to make it go faster without skipping through the whole thing. So, oh, okay. So I I said that the thief intro didn't show you coming in the back way, but it kind of, sort of does. To throw in a knife. Dodging, running to another pillar. We didn't go nearly that fast, but sure, okay. Dodging again. Flinging a knife. Yeah, we're badass. Yeah, we're cool. We're cool like a cucumber. Okay, here we go. Come in for hugs, come on. I give you a special gift. Since you have so shown such skill with ropes, I give you this set of magical grapnels. They will make any rope act as a magical rope and will release and grab at your command. Awesome, thank you. Off we go.
So, I'm the Princess Shapir. Nice ass you got here. A most honorable man. I was thinking that at some point, um, Rocky should say something like, don't thieve here. Which would indicate that, uh, that he knows you are one. But I don't know. That's not how you spell thief. I always struggle with that. No, no, I was right first time. Dyslexia, it's hard. Uh, I don't know that, um, whether he knows or not. All right, so real quick, We're going to go run through the bazaar. Hi, hello, hi. So. We left Rakesh and Raja. They can talk things out themselves. Uh, let's see. We need to talk to Dispel Potion Dude. Yeah, sure. Good kitty. Say hello. Tell him about Shapir. Ask about your dream. Ask about plants. Ask about your trees. Ask about pills. Ask about potions. Ask about dispel potions. Ask about healing pills. Ask about a feather. Okay. Tell about Julenar. Who's a good boy? You're a good boy. Say goodbye. That's all I need from you, sir. Zip, zip, zip. Zip. Let's zip through the bazaar. We need to go change our coins. Really wish Dad had given us a decent amount of coins. Alright. We're gonna need um I need five zebra skins. Hey, stop that. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna need Oh my god. So awful. There we go. Uh, let's see. We won't be grinding, so we really only need like ten, if that. Okay, we don't need any fruit. He doesn't know what the thief stein is. We were able to make it. He just didn't know what it was. That's cute. Find dagger. And, uh, find spear. Okay. Oh gosh, it's gonna make us sit through the cameo thing. 
Uh, buy junk goods. Huh. You can buy a blackbird. Uh, you may or may not remember there's a running joke. I think it's from Casablanca or something. I don't know where it came from. You guys tell me. Um, I could probably look it up. But, um, there's a running joke in a series that... The... Thief profession is all looking for this I don't know what to call it blackbird statue statue that's what I'm looking for wow um this blackbird brings back memories of your wonderful vacation in Razier. Wasn't there one in Spielberg, too? Too bad, this is just a cheap plaster imitation. Supposedly, like, four or five of these were made, and only one of them had any value, but the one that had value was incredibly valuable. Um, I believe that in the fifth game, that finally comes home, and the thief manages to get the real one. I'm not sure. Maybe the thief signed to the rope maker. Oh, one of the brethren, eh? I am not, but when I was younger, I knew many in your profession. I was a tightrope acrobat in my youth, and many with your skills would come to me to teach them acrobatics. But Tarna is no place for th mm, brethren. There is no guild here, and no place to sell items. Nice. I am impressed, sir. Okay, calm down. Thank you. Um, for that, we will buy a rope at full price. We will give Shala his note. <sighs> the perspective is off. We will give Shala his note. We will tell him about Shapir, and we will buy a carving. We will go to the meat vendor. Actually, no, we'll go to the robe vendor and buy a robe, bargain it down to 07, and purchase. And then you, you drumming, points hogging jerk, you get your commons. And for you, we will buy meat. Oh, goodness gracious. I guess we'll get 115. And that means we'll be set for food for the rest of the game. It's not necessarily good food, but our options are the meat, which is supposed to have dog slobber on it. Ew. Uh, the dried fish, which the description itself says would only be appetizing if you were starving to death. And fruit. And while I like fruit as much as this next person, I feel like after days or even weeks of it sitting in your inventory, it might not be the tastiest thing in the world. So we've got a magic grapnel hook. This would be an incredibly useful tool for second story work if it had a rope attached. So let's go ahead and attach a rope to it. Kind of weird that dad didn't include a rope, but whatever. This is an incredibly useful tool for second story work now that it has a rope attached. Thieves Toolkit, made by Acme, Fry and Prevere is a professional breaking equipment. This has all the tools you need to get ahead or at least inside. Um. We don't have as many mana and healing pills as I would like because this was from my Paladin import. The oil, squeaky greaser, and then we have all the gifts that we will need for gifting to people. So uh, let's go check in with Cresha. I 
I don't think we have anything else to talk about here. Normally this is where we'd talk to her about magic. Go up here and get our, get a gem. Well, our game decided to crash, and I have no idea how far back we saved. Oh, fuck. I am angry. Oh my god. I wonder if that's a sign from the universe telling me not to do this. I'm so upset. It crashed when we tried to go into the Temple of Sekhmet. Fudge. And I wasn't saving constantly because... Didn't crash now, did it? Oof. So I don't remember what we've done and what we haven't done. That's just unfair is what it is. We haven't done anything, I don't think. We went to the bazaar first. Did we talk to what's-his-face? No, we haven't done a dang thing. Alright, pills, healing, feather... Potions, dispel potions... Dream, plants, tree... Tell about Julinar. I cannot believe it crashed. I mean, I can believe it. I'm just... Mm. Oh, good grief. So now we get to start all over again and do the bazaar, which is not the funnest part. Yes, I need coins. Yes, I need five zebra skins. Yes, I need a water skin. Yes, I'm going to click 40 times in a row. Crashed our game. Crashed our game. It is not good, sir. It is the opposite of good. Don't want your fruit. Save our game. I'm just going to call it two. Spare me the purchase. Spiel. Bargain. Get him down to 12. Find spear. Bargain. Get him down to 12. Come over here. Okay, guys. Enough with the comedy act. Buy junk goods. Purchase. Bargain. Bring this down to 160. Why did they let you type it? They must have known. They must have known that it wouldn't be fun to have to sit here and click and click and click and click. Why didn't they let you type it? 
or at least let you go in quantities of 10. And he is going to do that whole thing for us again. And I don't know that there's even any point, like if it gives you, I don't think it gives you story points. <sighs> Buy oil for five. Buy blackbird for five. Buy rope, eight points. Make thief sign of Harami. Harami will not show up until we've um, left the Tarna map screen. Tell that Shapir by carving. Throw some coins at the drummer. By robe. By meat. Click until your hand falls off. Seriously. I refuse to believe that nobody in QA didn't go. Shouldn't we make this field typable? So who told him or her or them? Who told them? No, it's fine. The player won't mind clicking because I wish to have a discussion with them. Okay, we're leaving. Peace out. <laughs> I wonder if we can use our grappling hook to get the fruit. You retrieve the fruit with your magic grapnel and place both carefully away in your pack. Awesome. So presumably you could also we'll probably get the opal that way too. Nice. Good magic grapnel. We'll just zip around here until Rakish. No interest. None. We will not be fighting in this game. Why should we? We don't need any more money. Let's go ahead and make a camp. That'll make the night go faster than walking around. You can sleep without a fire. It's not an instant death or anything. But uh, things are much more likely to walk up and interrupt you and try to uh, attack you. Oh good, it's Arnie. Who is useful the first time you talk to him and then never again because you already know all the things you need to know. Waken as the sun begins to rise. Wow, 
everything is all over us. There we go. We're not allowed to leave the screen because they don't want you to travel too far from Tarna right before Rocky swears his pledge. Oh crap. I missed a honeybird. Oh well, it doesn't matter. We're not going for full points anyway. Man, I really thought we could maybe get this done in one video, maybe two, and now I'm I'm thinking, no, nah, there's no way. All right, we'll zip through it real quick. Yes, and now we have to go talk to Rakesh again. Goodbye. Now we're going to go zip off to the Simbani. I'm interested to see if he says something different depending on... Since you're a thief instead of a uh, mage or a paladin, does he know I'm a thief? That's the question for me. It is good for you to get away from Tarna, my friend. Tarna is not a place for one of your skills. Ha <laughs> ha, he does. He knows. I thought he might know. There are far too many temptations there for you, I'm afraid. I'm not tempted. Still, you have shown yourself to be a force for great good. I honor you for that and count you my friend. I do not know how your skills will aid in our mission of peace, but I trust you will think of something. <laughs> Thanks, Rakis. One with your skills must be very clever as well as physically fit in order to survive. But please try not to dishonor us amongst friends. It would be difficult for me to justify your actions to the Simbani if you decided to borrow something from them, particularly since we will be their guests. I don't steal willy-nilly. I don't like that. I... All right, we'll zip through this and then I'll be able to talk a little bit better. I do feel like... Okay, we've talked to him about everything, so now we just wait for... I have spoken, get out. Okay, now we just wait for this one. Oh, come on. Usually we don't even have a chance to talk at all.
We be sitting too much. We should go out to the village. Okay. Okay. Learn what you can from the Simbani and try to keep them from starting this war. Return to Tarna whenever you need to do so. Okay. So... Wizard one. We're not going back. They can't make us. And we're at the hour mark and we're gonna just keep going. We're just gonna keep going. Um we can't get in to see the live on. We can meet Yesufu. All about adventures, say goodbye. Tell about Spielberg, tell about peace, say goodbye. Tell about friendship, say goodbye. Awesome. Friend achieved. So, let me think, what would be in, in the, game, the way things progress is based on milestones not on time. So, for example, I swear we're getting attacked less walking than we were stealthing. So, for example, um, Johari didn't show up in the Paladin playthrough. We didn't get attacked once. Johari didn't show up in the Paladin playthrough until we were practicing throwing spears. Don't crash. I really thought he would come out. Have we not been gone long enough? Have we not done enough things? Fine. We'll just restore. Um. Yohari shows up as a plot point. Aw, oh, dang. Well, we have magic, so eat a face full of fireballs, sir. Yohari shows up when the paladin practices throwing spears with Uhura. And that makes sense plot-wise to tie the one to the other because it heard me complaining about not getting attacked. Because, um... The paladin would need to do all those things in order to join the tribe and buy Johari and make the plot continue. Conversely, with the mage, what made the game continue wasn't throwing spears, it was getting the magic wood. because the mage needs the magical staff in order to win the ending. What I'm wondering is, what does the thief need to do in order to move the game along as far as thief uh, uh, milestones go? 
because uh, we don't really need to do anything in order to earn the ending at this point as far as the thief goes because I believe the thief ending depends on the grappling hook which voila we already have leave us alone Jungle, let's go to the tree. Not interested in fighting you either, thanks. Up we go. Oops. Did not go the direction I wanted it to. There we go. Oops. There we go. There we go. Now we deal with the buggy. Possess me. We need a gem, please. And off we go up to the top now. Come on. There you go. I think... I'm not sure. I think we can sleep up here, which I'll do so we don't start getting, you're getting tired notifications. Yes, we can, which makes perfect sense. I mean, this is the most peaceful, welcoming, loving place in the universe, so. Poured water from the pool of peace onto the thingamajigger and got the gift of the heart fruit for the dispel potion. And off we go. Let's move on a little further. Come on. Down here. Alright, let's leave. That's all we need from here. We don't need to do the magic wood nonsense. <laughs> I giggled so hard when Krisha was like, I sense the presence of magical wood. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't usually get giggly at double entendres because I'm not 12, you know, but <laughs> come on. I sense the presence of magic wood. <laughs> Save Manu. Hi. Hello. And he's off. Just it's like the the start of a turn of porn video or something. I sense the presence of magical wood. Did nobody point that out? I don't know. Maybe the maybe slang was different in the nineteen nineties. Maybe nobody used wood to mean an erection at that stage. I don't know. Maybe the programmers were all sweet cinnamon buns who'd never heard of it. Let's go see. Yeah, yeah, we're getting tired. 
Let's go see if anything new has happened at the Simbani village. Have you seen the prisoner? Sweet, okay. So yeah, it's moving right along. Off we're gonna go to bed. Sleepy sleep. Let's go check on the prisoner. Hello, Yesufu. I'll be back with a dispel potion. Yeah, I saw it. It's great. Maybe you guys could get a bigger cage since I feel sorry for their lumbar support. <laughs> Hello, alligator guy. Not interested. I wouldn't fight you for the crappy two royals in your inventory. No, sir. All right, here we go. Oh, hello. Yes, lead me to honey, little one. Wow, that's a sound, isn't it? Where is our honey? Oh, there it is. Off we go. Come back. He's so happy. Ah! Pick up the feather. See, when you're using the parser, all you have to do is spell stuff correctly. You don't have to worry about... Fine. Take some magic to the I guess. we're gonna get back in time to meet him and that really pisses me off I wanted to meet him I wanted to meet Harami and I think it's just gonna be just an, an inch too late Oh good, here we go. You gotta help me. Agree to meet. Alrighty, woohoo. Okay, oh and there he is! <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, greet. We're gonna make a thief sign. So you're one of us, huh? We'll take my word for it and play it safe. You don't want to be stuck here like me without honor. There's no guild here to help you when you get caught. Let's give him some meat and then skedaddle. Let's go to the apothecary and tell him about Julinar. We're going to give him our feather and we're going to give him the venomous grapes and we're going to give him some pool of peace water and we're gonna give him the gift of the heart that's all of that then we're gonna save then we're gonna run up and do our uh, prophecy releaser of darkness has returned I'm gonna try to do it right because uh, it will be interesting to see how many points we can get as a thief. Choose that which you were. Um, I guess a key? We open doors. As you reach to replace the sacred jeweled statue of Nishkabob. Really? <laughs> With the carefully measured bag of sand. Is that a real thing? Because it sounds like shish kebab, but they changed like the first two letters. 
As you reach to replace the sacred jeweled statue of Nishka Bob with the carefully measured bag of sand, a small, childish voice from the shadows suddenly asks, What you doing? Good question. What do you do? Complete the exchange of sand for the idol and hope the child does not give an alarm before you can escape. Tell the kids you were just looking and leave nonchal nonchalantly without the idol. Explain to the child that you are merely cleaning the idol and ret will return it when you are done. Throw a handful of coins on the ground and tell the child to take them and be quiet. Knock the noisy kid over the head to keep him quiet and proceed with your task. Um, none of these are great. Uh, I like the fast-talking one about cleaning the idol, to be honest. Choose that which you are. Um, I don't know, a ring? You are battling a powerful dragon, and both of you are near death. The dragon offers you half its treasure hoard if it will let you live. What do you do? We've seen this one before. Decide to keep fighting, although you risk your life in the battle because you do not think the dragon will keep its word. You accept the offer because dragons are an endangered species. You demand that the dragon give you its entire horde, not just half, or you will slay it. I'm going to say you decide to keep fighting, although you risk your life because you do not think the dragon will keep its word. Choose that which you will be. Um, let's say cup. You hear the voice again. Three veiled and robed women stand before you, holding chalices. The first woman is dressed in purple velvet and says, Drink and you shall have my wealth. The second is dressed in blood red silk and says, Drink and you shall have my love. The third is dressed in black rags and says, Drink and you shall have my soul. Choose. Um, I don't know. You drink the dark, bitter liquid from the black chalice, not knowing what it is that you shall find. Thy soul has been weighed. Thou hast chosen thy own path, and by that path you shall be judged. The first is that which was. The key is the thief, the seeker, the opener of ways. It is curiosity. It is exploration. With the key behind you, you cannot be content following the words or footsteps of others, but must seek your own path. The second is that which is. The ring is purity and perfection. It is without beginning or end. It is wealth, the sign of authority, the oath of honor. It is a token of love and a pledge of faith. To choose the ring is to reveal a need for things ungained and a yearning for that which is not. The third is that which will be. That which you desire above all is love. Your actions are motivated by friendship. Your future is guided by those you trust. You will be made vulnerable by this need that you will triumph because of it. That is twice that the cup has told us that we seek love despite the fact that we have never chosen the love option. <laughs> You are one with yourself and shall be what you have been. Your skills are in harmony with your nature. In your actions, you have defined yourself not by what you did, but what you did not do. You did not choose actions guided by emotion. Blah, blah, blah. You have been judged worthy. We've seen this all before. Thou hast unleashed the darkness and the darkness encircles ye. You're going to have some friends. They're going to hang out with you. Now thou art the opener of the way and all thy heart has called shall draw near to thee. Make thy path above thy foe. Above thy foe. That's important. To win, thou must lose thy greatest treasure. Okay. Cool, cool. So it's the middle of the night. So we might as well sleep until morning. And then we can grab a dispel potion on the way out. Um, we didn't get a lot from that one. There was, There's more that they can say sometimes. And... You could see it gave us some of it and then just kind of zipped by like, eh, whatever. Um, oh, and I was going to rant about the series uh, opinion on thieves. So, I've ranted about, ranted about this before. And I think the series didn't know what to do with the idea of an honorable thief, which is very frustrating to me because it's its not even like it's a hard concept. There's, you know, look at Robin Hood tales. The, the idea of a thief that is a hero and a thief is not hard to find. Any, any kind of story with a trickster god, you know, is also <laughs> applicable here. Um, but you see this with like with the quest for glory too. With either you can't get a paladin if you if you steal things, or maybe you can't become a paladin if you steal things. It's unclear. 
Um, cause some people say they have, and some people say they have, you can't. And so I don't know. Um, but so you see this in quest for glory too, where you can't become a paladin if you steal things. Uh, and then of course, you know, Rakesh talks about, there's all those temptation for you and Tarna and, and, uh, uh, you know, your, your nature is good, I guess, but you know, you do steal things and, and like, it's frustrating to me because there absolutely is a narrative concept of a honorable thief. <laughs> it's not even hard to find examples of that, of somebody that robs from the rich and gives to the poor. As somebody who steals from people who need stealing from, but gives to people who, you know, don't have as much. So it's kind of irksome to me that everybody kind of acts like, oh, you're a thief. You're, you steal everything that isn't nailed down and are a terrible person. And it's like, but I'm not though. <laughs> and it doesn't need to be that way. I mean, sure, if you want to roleplay that way, fine, but... It's irksome when the game keeps insisting that, that that's the only way you can be a thief. Alright, we turned her back into a woman. Let's go to the, uh, the Libon's hut. Yeah, and we have to tell him about the prisoner, and we have to ask about the bride price. We cannot pay him in this first one. You have to actually say goodbye and, and be kicked up. If you try to give him gifts in that, uh, in that scene, he will treat it like a bribe and get all upset and say, get out, blah, 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 blah. Which, uh, bit of an annoying bug. Here you go, sir. Spear for you. And we will, oh, we do need to ask him about the, oh. We lost points for getting kicked out. Fortunately, I had saved the game. We never did ask him about the drum. And now we can't. So, let's just leave. Hi. You're my wife now. Here's a leopard. Here's a bead. Here's a knife. Here's a freedom. Boom. Okay, off we go. That's funny. He was like, did you hear the leopard man is a lover lady? Yes, I did hear. I immediately bought her as a wife. Absolutely no uh, hesitation whatsoever. I came pre-prepared with wife buying goods. And we're not going to get anywhere near full points because I didn't do things like go back and tell Cresha about the leopard lady or, uh, you know, anything like that. We didn't talk to Harami about Rakish. I could. I'm not going to because this is a speedy run. Speedy run. In theory, there we go. There isn't a creature in the jungle, which has not heard you coming. Good thing you are not a hunter. So, uh, this is going to go kind of similar to... the mage I'm just gonna ask everything yep after you ask one of everything then she stalks off it's fine we'll go this way I don't think anything attacks you during this time, which is uh, nice because otherwise it would get frustrating. So we can just draw little zipples on the map. Let's ask her for some magic. Yes. 
Are you still trying to get eaten? Are you looking for my village? You need someone like that cowman, Yasufu, to protect you in this jungle. I think it's cute that she keeps mentioning Yasufu. She clearly has kind of a crush on him. Um, which is sweet because they get married. Uh, I don't really know why she kisses you. I guess you could... Uh, I guess you could canon that uh, maybe it's her attempt at trying to get him out of her mind. <laughs> I'll kiss this guy and see if that fixes my fascination with the other guy. Or she could be Polly. I'm Polly, so. Polly Ann. Yeah, yeah, she could love two guys at once. I hope she doesn't love the hero because, uh, to the best of my knowledge, we will never see her again. So that would that would make me kind of sad. So let's just assume that it's not love. Just kisses. It does feel kind of strange that they shoehorn you into that. And it's actually you get points for it. So it's not even like it's optional. Okay, let's talk about the easy way to prove you're worthy is to bring the drama magic back to my village. The hard way is to win a magical battle. You must be crazy to even think of trying to steal the spear. You will be killed. My people are already doing rituals in preparation for war. The spear of the cow people is hidden in my father's hut. The ways you could get it is to return the drone magic, steal it, or prove yourself worthy. So we can't do the duel. And hopefully the game recognizes that. God, I hope it's not like, well, you've got magic, you must be fine. So we, because we don't have, uh, we don't have the juggling lights. And that's necessary to um, to win the duel. You need to be very quiet. You can see my village from here. You say you are good at sneaking in and out of places. You better be very good if you think you can get the Spear of Death from my village. I love how if you try to tell her about Shapir, she kisses you. Like, shut up. Quit talking. The time has come for the change ritual. Which we have seen several times now. But okay. Now you will see some real magic. There we go. Come, follow me. Alright, I have never done or even seen this part, so this will be interesting. Climb up here. This is the spot nearest to my father's hut. Okay. You can see Twi, our pet black leopard, wandering down there. He is trained to eat strangers, and he is always very hungry. You need to be careful, or he will attack you. Okay. So a very large and hungry-looking leopard patrols the ground beneath the leopard man village. The skull impaled on a spear is a grim reminder of what your fate will be should you fail here. The ancient gnarled tree is scarred with claw marks. 
The lighted doorway of the hut beckons you inward. You are looking out across the Leopardmen village. The huts of the village are built up in the trees. A fierce-looking leopard patrols the village floor. Juhari is especially beautiful against the night sky. Chui and I grew up together, but I cannot make him do anything he doesn't want to do. So you will have to be careful around him. He's always hungry and he attacks all outsiders. Chui is a good leaper and he has very sharp claws. Chui will eat almost anything. My father is the leader of my people and that is his hut. I think he is sleeping now. Do not harm him while you are there or I will be very angry with you. No one of my tribe dares to go into my father's hut without his permission. Even I am afraid to at times. Do not touch anything that you do not need to touch. There are magical protections everywhere. The spear of the cow people is somewhere in the hut. I'm sure you can find it if you can get there. Okay. So, uh, like I said, I have never seen this before. Never. Ever, 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 ever. So this will be interesting. Um, the obvious thing to do would be to throw down some food for Twee. You throw down some food to the hungry leopard. The next obvious thing to do would be to use the grapnel oh wow okay there's jumping and none of those things seem really necessary so I'm just gonna hold down the the arrow why is it going so freaking slow why? Why? Why did they think? There's no need to correct, so you're just, it's slow for the sake of being slow. That's so weird. Good luck. Now we're in her father's hut. So, there was, um, use grapnel rope, free, feed leopard, cross tight rope, feed monkey, release monkey. You see a monkey in a cage. It makes sense that it might make noise. Huh, we couldn't feed it, but we were able to release it. You see an old chest, you see a spear, you see a sleeping leopard man. So... She said not to touch anything else. Ho ho. We needed oil. Oil, oil, oil. There's the oil. You put oil on the hinges of the chest. You pick the lock of the chest. You find some strange looking glowing skulls. A necklace made from claws covered with slimy green goo and a throwing dagger. There are also eight royals strung onto a necklace. You take the dagger and the royals. Wow, that's really not worth the trouble, is it? You carefully retrieve the Spear of Death. Eight royals. Hurry up! The guards will see you at any minute! I mean, seriously, eight royals, really? Why even baller? It just seems like a waste. You grab your grapnel and hurry back to the Simbani village with the Spear of Death. So, I thought there was also a way to break into the Libon's hut and steal a drum. They seem pretty cool with the fact that you uh, stole their stuff. 
So yeah, I said before that the Paladin playthrough obviously had the most thought put into it story-wise. It crashed again. You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. That is so annoying. Um, so as I was trying to say, um, it seems pretty clear that the Paladin story was the story that had all the thought put into it. And the mage and the thieves story were kind of built around that. Which, I mean, sort of makes sense in the sense that Rakish is a paladin. So... And this story is kind of partly his story. So it's, you know, it's gonna have a lot of the same, a lot of high notes about paladining. But, uh, man, the thief story feels like an afterthought. You can win the game without... changing or increasing any of your skills. I mean, look at our skills. Look at them. We've barely upped anything. 200, 212, 200, 212, 200, 250. That's what we started with. 200, 200, 200, 200. Three points more on pick locking. We didn't even need more than 30 pick locks to open that chest. 200, 150. We got 18 in communication and 36 in honor. The thief story is such an afterthought tacked on that you can literally just you could literally just zoom through the game with your eyes closed. And I think that was um how do I want to say it? I think that was badly planned. Um I mean, granted, I think it was pretty clear that um, this game was rushed. Hence all the bugs. And I think it was clear that... How do I want to say this? They may have felt stuck with the three character concept in a way that they didn't want anymore. So here they're trying to make this story about paladins and honor and and societies obsessed with honor and they clearly did not know what to do with a guy who looks at the whole concept of honor and goes Psh, <laughs> I play by my own rules. Um, and it's a shame because I think a noble thief, a Robin Hood archetype could be really interesting in a story like this because he is a wild card. Y you have, you know, Tarna is obsessed with honor. And, and if you're an honorless one, no one will look at you or talk to you. What would a Robin Hood type do with that? If, if he accidentally got saddled with that, or maybe not accidentally at all. Um, can you just continue to take things? Can you just walk up to the fruit seller and just browse through his wares and take what you want and he has to ignore you? Can you, like draw lewd pictures on the sides of walls and they're not allowed to pretend to, see, to they have to pretend they don't see it because you're honorless I mean I feel like the right character archetype could do so much with that concept of, of just being the wild card that doesn't care about your you know doesn't care about your rules man 
Um, and uh, you know, similarly, you have the Simbani people who... I'm kind of sad we didn't break into the Liban's hut. You probably have to pick one. Break into the Liban's hut and steal the drum, or break into the, the Loverman's hut and steal the, the spear. Because why would you do both? Once you have one, that's all you need. Um, so you probably have to pick one. But, uh... You know, having said that... Why... Uh, uh, you, you've got this Liban in a hut and uh, you know they have no security whatsoever because this isn't a culture that really has to worry about um, <laughs> man who didn't come with us uh, this isn't a culture that really has had to worry about uh, thieves because it's such a small community that oh man we didn't talk to the storyteller I wanted to find out what his story was for a thiefy boy. Oh well. I wonder if there's like a text dump. Whoops, need my magic. Okay, that seriously sounds like the Five Nights for Freddy's laughing child that shows up with the balloon boy. Tell me that's not balloon boy. It sounds like the little boy. Storyteller, there we go. Come on, one of you, somebody must have already text dumped it for us. Somebody would have text dumped it for us, right? Okay. Okay, so I think all we need to do is throw the grapple up at the... Oh, we climb it. Okay, fine. Look how good we are. Hide. Hide from the... Hide from the ape man. Oh, Christ. I guess we came down too soon. I guess we came down too soon. I think all we do is sneak past the guards. The door is locked. You deftly pick it with our 30 skill. And we weren't stealthy enough to get past them. That's a shame. It means we have to kill them. So now we just get to see the ending, which is uh, apparently going to require us to use our grappling hook again. 
It's kind of funny that the the entire game for the thief revolves around that grappling hook. Not sure how I feel about that. Man, I really want to know what the storyteller says to a thief. That's gonna drive me nuts. Um. We shot The power within went out without me be healed. I don't want to go too fast because that seems to be how we've gotten crashed before. Is if you talk to, if you you know nod your head too fast through the text. Alright, here we go. Zip, zip, zip. Now we get to go face the mirror, which is an extremely crummy boss, I must say. Okay, let me see. I found a YouTuber who played as a thief and is talking to the storyteller. Oh my god, she just fucked up. You jerk. Really? Didn't talk to them. Why would you not talk to him? I got so excited. I was like, yes, a thief and talking to the... Three thief. Oh. Oh. There we go. I'll fight this monster. You run. Well, at the very case, the worst place. Maybe we can. Uh... Maybe we can reload one of my old thief saves. We should have an auto save here. Okay. So it's said to go up to to face your enemy. Look above you, fool! That meddling human is going right over your head! So you have escaped from my trap. Perhaps destroying you will be more interesting than I thought. Um... You don't have a clear shot from here. This is not a good place to practice throwing. But what the hell do we do? Jump? Is there a jump? Oh, here we go. Ha! You think you are above my wrath? Let us see how high you can walk without that rope. Um... Oh, that's okay, though, because we have acrobatics. Um, why is this not working? Think again, think again, think again. Um... Can you pour peace water on it?
This must be the world gate. That's interesting. Thanks so much, game. Okay. Oh, damn. There we go. Can we acrobatics over it? What a... Quest for glory, three, thief, ending, because I can't figure it out, and I'm not very smart. Fine page, grappling, really, does not have grappling hook? Oh, it's calling it a grapnel hook, okay, fine. Thief walkthrough. Okay. Use your grapnel on the pillar on the right side. Set your grope on fire, but you can cross and jump to the far pillar. Can I? How? How? How do I cross? Oh, apparently you just click randomly until it does it. <sighs> now we're going to throw it at him. Your last remaining grapnel finds its mark. Last remaining? The demon wizard emits an unearthly wail as the magic grapnel embeds itself deeply into the creature's inhuman flesh. And knocks the orb over with it, too. You run to the stairs. Okay, ending. Alright, we've already seen this ending. We're gonna restore. What's my oldest thief save? Oh, yeah. I don't think the storyteller shows up once uh, Jahari's been ca captured. So, if we wanted to see what the uh, storyteller says to the thief, we would um, we would have to find a let's play that actually talks to the storyteller. I I I sort of vaguely want to remember or think I'm remembering or maybe I've made it up that the storyteller says something about. Uh, a kid that was banished for stealing. Um, but, I, you know, I don't remember. I really don't. Um, I really had hoped that someone would have a text dump of the game and I could just read it to you. But I do not see it anywhere online. And I'm not going to go through... Uh, I'm not going to go through the uh, opening again because we'd have to do the whole... Uh, oath before the council and the slow walk here with with Rakesh and that was my bad and I'm sorry I did not mean to miss it but uh all of these would have been saved after it so so we miss our chance um I presume it was something good and, and interesting um so hey that's all the more reason for I always end with with encouraging people to buy games the games if they want to play more because uh you know, the point of a Let's Play shouldn't be to replace the games. A lot of uh, game companies, I think, incorrectly are afraid that it will and that it'll hurt sales. Um, and I think that's incorrect and silly because people, in my opinion, don't. We, we watch Let's Plays for a different reason than we play games, and we play games for different reasons than we watch Let's Plays, and as, as it usually goes, anyway, in my experience. Um, so I think that's silly and paranoid to limit Let's Plays because, well, then people won't buy our game. But even so, I do, I try to, you know, end Let's Plays saying, if you enjoyed this game, then definitely check it out. You can get this on GOG. I think you can get the entire collection for like $10. So it's pretty, you know, a good deal. Um, so play it if you want. 
come back, tell me what the storyteller says to the thief, what his new story for is. Um, if somebody types up the whole thing in a comment, I will make it the the starred comment or the whatever it's called, the the pinned comment for this for this video. Okay, whoever does that first will get to be the pinned comment for the video. We'll do it that way. Um, so that was the uh, the wizard's ending, but also the thief ending. Um, I don't have a lot to add except that, like I said, the thief uh, game was very clearly added on as just a, you had to add something, right? Uh, they need something to do, so give them this. Uh, we blew through without barely touching our skills. Our intelligence went up slightly. Our vitality went up slightly. Communication went up literally only because we didn't pay full price for stuff in the bazaar. And then most of the honor that went up was just stuff that we did anyway as part of the story that was going to happen. Um, none of our skills. <laughs> Pick locks is back down to 30. I could have swore it was 33 at some point, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um... Oh, because I, I restore... This is an earlier restore. So the actual real would be to restore... Can we see it here? Duh, I'm in an earlier game. Uh, can we restore here? So this is after we fled Tarna. Even so, okay, 12, 12, 33, 18, 36, which is, so it hadn't even moved since that, since the, the bit where we found Jahari. Um, you know, we were able to pick the one lock in the game, no, two, sorry, the demon door and the, the, the chest in the, uh, uh, the leopard man leader's hut with, 30 lock pick skills. I don't think we could get into the little old lady's house in Spielberg with 30 lock picking skills. I mean, that is just almost an insult. Um, but they gave you nowhere to grind skills. So, and there's no vigor potion. So unless you manage to think of the, the peace pool, carry around water in a water skin trick, uh, you couldn't just sit there and grind right then and there. So uh, they kind of painted themselves in a corner, and it shows. And uh, so to me, you know, lazy design on the Thief playthrough. Very lazy, very lazy. Um, shame on you, Sierra. I'm, I'm doing the little thing where you sweep one index finger over the other index finger to indicate shame. Shame on you, Sierra. Um, the next game, Quest for Glory 4, uh, will not mistreat thieves so badly. And also, it won't... How do I put this? It has different stuff happening for different character types, but it's not nearly so different as, as like, this one was here. This this game was the one that, that really broke the paths apart as much as possible. And I think they realized that maybe that they ambitiously bit off more than they could chew, and they pulled it back in together more tightly with Quest for Glory 4. I love... Quest for Glory 4. It is one of my most favorite games. I don't know how to rank it with like Quest for Glory 1, Quest for Glory 2, and Quest for Glory 4. Like of those three, which ones to put first, second, and third? That would be very hard for me because I, I love them all. But Quest for Glory 4 is wonderful. It has an amazing, an amazing atmosphere that stays with you. Um, just long after you finish playing the game. It reminds me of the good parts, the non-awful, non-horrible, racist parts. It reminds me of the good, creepy parts of Lovecraft. And they were very clearly going for a Lovecraftian, otherworldly uh, monsters that your mind cannot even comprehend uh, kind of, of feel. And, oh, it's just so good. It's the sort of game that you want to play on a, a dark winter night when it's cold and you're wrapped up in a blanket and you have something warm to drink and the warmth makes you feel safe and comfortable but you know that the cold is closing in and also there's an unknowable horror sneaking up behind you and there's no one else in the house to warn you or help you and if you turn around and look at the unknowable horror that's just going to make it more angry so you don't that's what that game is. It's a beautiful game. It's it's like a horror game, but without being horror. Which is good, because I'm a big scaredy cat and I don't do well with horror games. Um, 
it's beautiful. I love it. I hope you will love it as well. I'm probably going to save it until my voice is at least slightly more recovered because I want to do it justice. It's a beautiful game and it deserves, it deserves me being well for it. Um, so hopefully in the next couple of days, maybe my head code cold will be gone. Um, so this has been Quest for Glory 3. Thank you for coming along. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. This was a two-hour video. I really appreciate you coming along. I will see you in the next video, which should be Quest for Glory 4. Um, I do have to figure out whether I'm going to try to play the GOG version, um, which may or may not retain all the original bugs. I don't know. I don't know if GOG tried to fix them. Or if I want to try the... Um, there's been a... What's it called? Uh, there's been a player remake, or I guess remake isn't quite the right word, but uh, uh, a player... What's it called? It's like S... Scum M V M, which I don't know. Scum V M. I don't know what that stands for, but people on Twitter have been telling me about it when I've been talking about Quest for Glory 4. They're like, oh, are you going to play the Scum VM? Are you going to play the original? And apparently, the Scum VM is a player version that they stripped out all the DOS box stuff and introduced a lot of new bugs, but are fixing those bugs and fixing the old bugs in the process. But it's not a finished product. Um, is my understanding. And I really don't want to play something that's not a finished product. Because if I run up against a bug, I'm just going to... What do you do? You know, go report it on the forum and wait two to five weeks for somebody to fix it? I'm not a coder. Uh, we did that with Not Tonight, where I was tabbing, alt-tabbing out of the game every five minutes to report another bug, and that was horrible. So I think... All right, I think... We're going to try to play the DOS box version of Quest for Glory 4 and at least give it a good college cry. Try. Good college cry. It may end up a good college cry. Uh, we'll give it a good college try. If we hit bugs, then you know what we'll do. We'll, we'll start over and, and with the Scum MV and, and see if we can't get farther with that one. Um, the good news is, since I'm an old Quest for Glory 4 veteran, I know where the bugs are, and hopefully, <laughs> cross his fingers, we can get around them. Um, so, so very incredibly buggy, incredibly frustrating game from a technical standpoint. Beautiful writing and atmosphere. Um, so, you know, either or. It is also fully voiced, um, which will be interesting because that gives me less to do. Um, and I become a bit more spectatory and just sit back and listen to the people talking and then kind of comment in between the talking. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Um, it may not be the best Let's Play material, but it's a good game and we're gonna play it. So, um, don't be afraid. It'll be great. Okay, we're coming up on the two hour mark and I know I've got to edit out a couple of crashes because you guys don't need to see me fumbling at my desktop. Um, so it'll be just under two and I will let you go here. Uh, my name is Anna Mardal and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for coming along. Bless you. Bye-bye.